the bridge was actually started in uh, 1856 when Amos Schinkel got on board as the director of the Covington Cincinnati Bridge Company, and he hired on John Augustus Roebling. A German immigrant who came to America in 1831, he had studied engineering at the Polytechnical Institute in, in Berlin. And Roebling himself was, was a very well-known man, really, by this time. He started uh, producing iron rope, and then he also started working with the state of Pennsylvania as a surveyor and an engineer. And because of that, he was then invited to, in 1846, to present a proposal to build a bridge on the Ohio River. Construction began on the bridge in 1856 and continued on for two years. And for financial reasons, uh, construction came to a halt. And then uh, construction began again in the spring of 1863. The first thing was the excavation of the footings for the towers. And something that a lot of people don't know is that those tires rest on footers that are made of wood. The two sandstone towers that stand 200 feet tall are actually built on timber grillages or timber foundations that are about 12 feet thick, 110 feet long, and about 80 feet wide. You'll read some places that they're oak, but if you read Roebling's report, he said he used whatever was available. But then the sandstone towers were constructed on top of that timber mat. A lot of folks have said, hey, wait, wouldn't timber rot? Wouldn't that deteriorate? Well, the interesting component of that is it's always submerged in water. So what happened is those timbers are now waterlogged and without oxygen, they do not rot and they do not deteriorate. Then they can't start it up with the stone towers and the first 25 feet is faced with limestone because he thought that would give better resistance to the water. Above that, it's sandstone, except for some limestone that he used to sort of make distinctive bands across it at, at certain points. At that point, that's when they actually spun the cables, and that was using Roebling's patented process that he used to spin cables in place. That consists of large number of individual wires that, that make up that round suspension cable. There's 5,180 individual wires in the original suspension cable and there's 2,228 individual wires in the secondary suspension cables that were added during the 1890s reconstruction. Actually that's the same method pretty well that's used in uh, large suspension bridges to this day. There were immigrants involved in the construction. There would have been probably your, your common, you know, laborers who would have been performing less skilled operations. And then you would have had all the, the stonemasons and so forth that would have been performing the mo more skilled jobs. We don't have any records of who actually worked on the bridge, but carved on the top of the North Tower, Charles Stolzenburg carved his name into uh, immortality. and. It's one way we have a record of one person who actually worked on the bridge and is only visible from the top of the Northern Tower. Washington Roebling was John Roebling's son, and uh, he was in the Union Army during the Civil War. He uh, worked for the Corps of Engineers constructing bridges and so forth. When he got out of the service in early 1865, he came here and joined his father, and actually his father went back east and uh, was concentrating on plans and proposals for the Brooklyn Bridge, what became the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, there, John Roebling received some injuries on the work site, which ended up in the amputation of some of his toes and infection, and he died of lockjaw in 1869. So it would be his son, Washington Roebling, who actually kind of completed the bridge here in Covington, who would go on to complete his father's project and the, the most well-known of his father's projects, and that would be the uh, Brooklyn Bridge. There were many people in Kentucky who were in favor of building the bridge, but on the Ohio side, there were a number of people who were opposed to a bridge being built. They were afraid 
that they would uh, lose business to Northern Kentucky. A number of commercial interests in Cincinnati opposed the bridge because they felt that the bridge would make Northern Kentucky, it would make Covington more convenient that people would start moving their businesses, their homes to Covington. And if they did that, then Cincinnati would not grow as much as it had been growing. They had a special rider attached which said that the bridge could not line up with any of the streets in Cincinnati. The bridge was open to pedestrian traffic in December, the weekend of December 1st and 2nd in uh, 1866, 46,000 people crossed the bridge on Saturday and 120,000 on that Sunday. And they were, they were paying to cross it. It was three cents a person for a, for a ticket. And the bridge was then dedicated on New Year's Day in 1867. Many of the people that came to this area arrived as settlers and immigrants coming down the Ohio River. And I, I think they, connect uh, with the bridge, but they also identify with the story of Roebling himself. He was a successful immigrant who came here, became part of uh, realizing the American dream here. How it changed Covington was it made Covington literally a viable place for people to live as a bedroom community and to commute on a daily basis to jobs in Cincinnati. And that meant that they could have less expensive housing if, as long as they were willing to pay the tolls every day to go across the bridge. It is a national historic landmark, a icon for the community, and everyone that is from this area knows the history of the bridge, knows its importance to the community, Anytime you go down around the bridge, you're able to see uh, one or more photographers or an artist with their easel. It's really a work of art and a, a great piece of architecture. Roebling himself was more than an engineer. He was really a, an architect, and you can see that when he built the bridge, it wasn't simply a, a, a structure, a utilitarian structure. He created a, really a, a great work of architecture with these uh, Romanesque towers, with the Greek crosses and spheres at the top of the bridge. Also the cables and the suspenders have often been likened to a, a musical instrument. It has the appearance of a harp. Roebling not only built a great bridge that has lasted for so many years and will last for so many more, he built a civic ornament. It is a beautiful thing in and of itself.